Hey guys, Voltar here, and today we are going to install my Duo RGB board. Now I know that in a previous bad modding video, I briefly outlined this, but I wanted to make a more thorough video that would be more, eh, I guess, tutorial in nature. Uh, so the candidate today is going to be this Duo RX, and we're going to get right to it. So sit back, strap on, and prepare your bodies. Alright, so we unzipped all of the case screws. Let's just carefully lift the top case off and move it to the side very slowly because you have a wire here that goes from the main board to the uh, drive door limit switch. Uh, this just tells the uh, console when the drive door is in an open or closed state. So we'll very caref carefully take that out. We will discard the, um, the top and in order to install this board, um, we need to totally remove the main board. So I'm going to go ahead and start by just removing very carefully the drive assembly, the optical drive assembly. That's very simple to do. It's three connections. And then we'll lift the drive assembly out, set it somewhere to the side, and we have one, two, three, four, five uh, Phillips screws that we need to zip out of here, so I'm going to go ahead and do that. Okay, now we're ready just to remove the board. Comes out very, very easily. If you want, it might be a good idea to go ahead and take the um, power switch off because it's very loose fitting and you don't want to drop it and forget where it goes so maybe just slide it out of the way and the board is free alrighty so here we are now the first thing that we're going to want to do is the by default the duo systems have a DIN5 connector well there are nearly not enough connections on here for an RGB output so we're going to need to remove this interface and replace it with a DIN8. Now fortunately the DIN8 connectors, if you buy the right one, share exactly the same footprint as the DIN5. Now the only difference is is that the DIN8 has an extra three conductor, uh, three prongs in the back. But we will be clipping those out as those will not be terminating into the board. So first order of business, let's remove the DIN5. Here's a fun trick. That easy. Now of course we're going to have to do some prep work to our new DIN 8 connector in order for it to seamlessly work with the existing footprint, but th there's just a couple of things to note here. Primarily the differences between the DIN 8 that we have on the right and the DIN 5 that we just removed, if you look at these two prongs in the front, uh, these are kind of anchor grounds that also serve as the shield ground uh, for the, uh, I guess, sort of the Faraday cage around the uh, DIN 8 male plug. Now, on the new connector, these are much, much wider. And on the old connector, as you can see, it's much more narrow. Um, so what we need to do is we need to disassemble both of these, which is a very simple process. And we need to rob um, this little metal filament from the old connector and we need to put it in the new connector. Now if you'll notice, the, you know, in my experience there are a couple of different sort of permutations of this connector which are, they're basically all functionally the same, but there is a crappy version of this where the, the prongs in the middle 
are really thin, almost like they're even made out of like a pot metal or something. And they're kind of a generic version of this. Um, this connector here has the same exact sort of landings or, or footprint to accommodate the narrow ground here. So you only need to switch out this little jewel right here. And you don't have to use the same base plate. You can. You can use the same base plate, but really the only thing that you're really concerned about is getting this ground into this connector. So let me show you how to disassemble these really quick. Let me show you how to replace those. So if you look at each side of the DIN 8 and even the DIN 5, you'll see these tabs on each side of the connector that hold this base plate in. And the only thing that you really need to be worried about is when you're lifting these tabs up with whatever tool that you have, be careful to try and try not to make an effort to not break them off. You, you really don't want to break them off. It's not the end of the world if you do, but it just might make things a little more difficult when you go to put it back together. So as you can see, I just very easily separated those tabs and this base whoop, I lost a oh it came out it came out automatically but the base plate comes right off here are the prongs now here's something else we are replacing this this is the older one we really don't need it we can throw it out so I'm gonna put this connector right here here's the DIN 5 I'm gonna do the exact same thing where we just very carefully remove the base plate and I actually broke that one that's fine I don't care about the old base plate. Comes right out. Here is our little metal shield ground. We're going to pull it out, old base plate, throw it to the side. Base plate from the new one. See the provisions here for the holes? We are just going to simply, as you can see in the camera, put that right in just like that. That part's done, but there's one more thing that we have to do. Okay, so we prepped the new base plate with the old shield ground prong from the old connector. We've set that to the side, and now we are looking at the uh, new DIN 8 connector. Now there's one more thing we need to do here. And so the DIN 8 obviously has three more landings or, or prongs here uh, because it, it accommodates, you know, three more connections. Well, there are no provisions on the main board for these, so we're going to have to cut these. Now, the way I like to do this is, if you look at the base plate, the, the, the outside, the outside pins here, they fit into these outside rings. So, when I cut these, I don't want the, um, I don't want these prongs to ever knock or touch the main board when we seat this back in. So to get an idea, <coughs> excuse me, of how much I need to cut, is I'm going to just temporarily sort of put this back together like so. I'm just going to temporarily put this back in and I'm going to gauge where exactly the guard covers the prong because I we need the metal to still go through this ring this guard here because if it if you if you clip it for example if you clip it up here then this pin is going to not be connected it's not going to be anchored to anything so it's going to be free to move around right so it's important that it has some sort of structural integrity that's that's provided by this so you want to get it just so where the metal meets into the plastic, but it doesn't come out on the other side like you see here. So I can see very clearly where I need to cut. Right there. Right there. And finally, right there. Now, I'm going to fit this back in there and see how close we are after taking off that much material. So everything just snaps back in here like so. Snap, snap, snap. Everything's locked in as you can see, locked and locked. And we have no material, no pin exposure on the outside. And guess what? It's still locked in. It's a very simple step and it's a very easy thing to mess up, but if, like I said, if you have, you know, if the pins are protruding out just like they are here, 
That can go right through the solder resist of the board and that can short and that's not good for anybody. So by doing it this way, you're, you have no risk of doing that and also the pins are still locked in by these little ring guards. And you've got your new connector or your new shield ground on there. So this connector is prepped and we're ready to put it back in. Let's do it. Beautiful, thoroughly soldered, and very well wetted. One quick note, if you intend to use composite sink in place of composite video, which you can do, um, you'll want to do the same process uh, to the composite video pin that you did to the RGB lines. That just separates it from the main board and pulls it out of circuit, so you don't have to do any soldering or cutting on the board, and that gets your composite sink cleanly out. Okay, so now we're actually going to get into the real meat of the installation process. And please keep in mind, what you're about to see, this is just how I do it. As far as the board placement goes, where I pull power and ground from, how I route the wires, this is just my preferred method that I've used for years and years. You can do whatever you want to do. This is just how I do it. So please, don't feel like that, you know, you have to do it this way or that, you know, maybe some of the techniques that I use might be slightly overwhelming. This is just my process. So. I like, with the Duo R and the RX, to mount the PCB on top of the drive controller. Now there's a nice, nice ground flood on the bottom of this, so it's very well shielded and insulated. And also, I like to pull power and ground um, directly from the drive controller too. Uh, ground, I pull off pin 60, and um, I believe um, 60, pin 61 here. Uh, I pull power from. So I'm going to zoom in and show you that. I'm going to wire this thing up and uh, talk a bit about it. So let's zoom in here and let's get to it. Okay, so I'm going to very quickly prep pin 60, which is our ground, and pin 61, which is going to be our 5 volt supply. Ready to go. Super strong. Okay, so now that we'll be soldering directly to the 6260, I'm going to prep the pins just a bit, knock some oxidation off, and apply a little fresh solder. So I'm going to load up just a little bit of silver bearing here on my tip. Okay, very, very little. Less is more in this case, so we applied some uh, flux to the uh, pins here, and let's just come in here. It's just a sweeping motion. Let's let's apply. Let's apply a little heat. Let's knock the oxidation off, and let's let's add a nice little layer, nice little film of solder here for our new conductors to to attach to. So just in a nice sweeping motion, just like that. Okay. Let's get to soldering. Alrighty, so we went ahead and soldered to the 6260, and then we just simply brought our conductors out, which I use a four conductor ribbon cable, as you saw earlier brought it out to the input side of the chip, clipped, stripped, and soldered in. It's really that easy. So now we'll work on the output side. Okay, so before we get started on the outputs, I just want to make a very quick point here. If you noticed on the inputs, uh, there were no crosses, there were no switchovers between the 
soldering from the 6260 all the way to the input side of the uh, board here. And the same principle applies when you're installing this board in a Duo R or a Duo RX. It is a straight shot between the outputs and the DIN. So I just wanted to say that people seem to get this confused because quite understandably there's not a lot of good uh, real documentation on how you know RGB is wired. Fortunately we've kind of come up with a standard over the past few years so um, this, this, this whole pinout honors that. So let's get started. If you remember in the beginning of the video when I told you if you wanted to use composite sync in place of composite video, the same sort of pin trimming process that we went through through the R, G, and B lines, you would do the same thing for the composite video pin. So it's isolated and pulled out of circuit. And because I've done that off camera, this pin's ready to go. So I just routed this composite sync output conductor into the DIN. I have it in position here and now all I'm going to do is solder and go. Let's get our GMB out of the way. Ooh. So having soldered in the outputs here, that pretty much concludes this video. Um, you know, from start to finish, this is just how I do it. And I understand that maybe, you know, methods may differ slightly from mine, and that's perfectly fine, but in my opinion, this is just the fastest, you know, straightest line of sight method and way of getting this in here uh, in the most efficient manner. But, you know, there's actually one more thing that we need to do. Uh, that's that's totally electable. You know, your mileage may vary. You may not even need to do this, but you might. And that's the gel bar fix. So we're going to flip this board around, and we're going to look on the bottom layer right around where the cue card slot lives. So let's do it. Now, if you're getting gel bars, it's quite possible that there's some uh, slight ripple in the uh, DAC output between the uh, digital video and the analog output of the 6260. And courtesy of Tim Worthington, there's a new simple way to address this. It simply involves removing capacitor 909 and capacitor 923, replacing them, removing them, removing them, and replacing them with 4.7 microfarad capacitors. So I'm just going to do that really, really fast. So having replaced those two capacitors, this video is finally concluded. I hope you guys enjoyed it. And if you did enjoy it, please give me a like. That stuff really helps. And if you haven't subscribed already, consider it. I've got a lot of good stuff coming out. I think uh, you guys will be quite entertained. So having said that, I appreciate you guys. Thank you very much. Have a good evening. Take care for now.